Hello and welcome back to Pentiment. There has been a murder. Or, putting on my detective hat where we question everything. Somebody has died. That's what we're going to say. Somebody has died and we suspect they were killed with a knife. We actually don't know anything. We have not examined the body yet. We will do that in a couple of hours. The um, person doing the autopsy has invited us back. I was going to say coroner, but that seems like too lofty a title for what is effectively just the monk who knows how bits of the body work um, and has been put in charge. It's not so much that he's had proper training in it. It's more just he happened to be there and he seemed to have the right skill set, right? Um, so we know that he's dead. That much we can say for sure. We also know that uh, the Abbey would very much like to say that it was Brother Piero who did it. So that they have somebody that they can point a finger at and so that there isn't any more investigation. We don't want that to happen. We like Brother Piero. So we're going to hopefully go and solve that. Before we do, I want to briefly have a look at this. One, to see if there's anything new. And two, there we go, to talk about the People tab. Now, I've been told that it can potentially give you even more um, tips about what's going to happen in the game than we have already seen. Like, for instance, we know a character is likely going to die at some point in this story, as in a character not the one who just died, Baron Rothfogel, but somebody else. We're not going to look at the People tab anymore. We pretty much met everybody in the game that we need to know about anyway. Like, we've met everybody in the town, we have a rough idea of how people connect. And it didn't give us a ton of info, so if it's going to start spoiling, like, you know, characters are dying and things, we're going to leave it. We're still going to read the glossary tab, but we're not going to read that one because, well, it doesn't really it, it doesn't really add as much as it could give away. Anyway, um, it's Brother Florian. Yes, that is going to be our coroner, I guess we can call him for just now. Um, and we need to go to the Drucker's place to basically... You know, um, calm down before we come back. Um, now, they, they are the people who we previously ignored when they offered us a, a chance to go to dinner with them. We said, yeah, we'll be there. And then immediately went and had dinner with the Baron. So, they might be unhappy with us, but hopefully they'll forgive us. Um, glossary. Right, what, what new stuff have we got? Golden. Uh, golden, uh, gold coins used as currency throughout the Holy Roman Empire. Though different standards exist for the golden in different regions, it is generally equivalent to the Florentine florin. Okay, so that's effectively going to be our currency if it pops up, you would imagine. Right, and then nothing else. Okay, uh, there's no way back into the church right now. We're going to have a little look over here. There are other places we can go. Let's go to some other places, see if there's anybody around. If there's nobody around, that's fine. But it seems like something big has happened, and I would very much like to speak with people about it. We know the nuns were taken away here. Maybe somebody knows something. Anybody around? No. Um, maybe somebody is in here? Uh, no. Okay, time to leave. Actually, I think this is the one where nobody is, like, ever. This is the one where people usually are, the Prioress's house. Right. Can we speak? God bless you, Andreas. God bless you, Mother Cecilia. Something I can help you with? Ah, there we go. I need to talk to you uh, again about the Baron. How you walked away with the sisters when he arrived. Given that the Baron was just murdered, it seems worth inquiring about the cause. Why, do you not trust in the Abbot's judgement? Hmm. It is not the Abbot's judgement that matters, but the uh, Archdeacon's. All too true, but you must proceed carefully in your inquiries. The Abbot does not want anything to interfere with the Archdeacon's investigation. That includes you. He's not here yet? Maybe we've done this out of order. Maybe we should just go to the Drucker's house. Um, how do you feel about interfering with it? Andreas, this is not a joke. The abbot is concerned for the future of the abbey with good reason. Um, I'm concerned for Piero's life. I'm simply a nun. Why do you think I can help you? Um... I saw how you reacted when the Baron arrived. You must know something about what's going on. Alright, I did have reason to be concerned about Baron Rothfogel's presence. The Baron caused irreparable harm to one of the sisters on his last visit. 
Oh. The damage was severe enough that she had to leave us for some time. Is that the sister who's currently locked up in the church? What kind of harm? Irreparable. Okay. That is why I removed the sisters from his presence as soon as I could. Which... I think I know which sister it is. Are there any who may have wanted revenge? I cannot know what is in a person's heart, Andreas. Can I at least speak to the sister who was harmed? I... No, Andreas. I don't think that would be appropriate. Um... Alright, this doesn't help me much if I don't know what happened or to whom. I understand this is less information than you likely wanted, but I do not think I can tell you more in good conscience. Trust me when I say the victim of this incident could not have killed the Baron, because they're currently imprisoned. I need more than that. Are there any records on her, or on what happened? Yes, we keep records on all the sisters in the library. Not that that does you any good, you're not allowed. Could I ask Sister Illuminata to see them? She won't give them to you. Our records aren't available for outsiders to look through. Yeah, we're definitely... Um, she didn't tell me. And I... Why would I tell her? I can sneak in on my own, you know. I found a secret entrance in the crypt. Don't try it. You'll be caught and you'd be lucky if the abbot only banished you from the abbey until Judgment Day. Hmm. Hmm. We'll see. Well, thank you for your help. May God bless you, Andreas Maller. Yeah, okay, so that definitely felt like a conversation that implied other things had happened. We're gonna leave. It, it seems like maybe this game doesn't actually want you to do things out of order. At least not yet. So let's maybe just take this opportunity to go. Although I am gonna check the guest house just to see if the guy's around. Oh, we can go into the guest house right now? Hmm. We also, oh, what's this? What's this? A letter to the Baron from Prior Ferenic? Okay, I'm trying to read it. Baron Rothvogel. Trotz Jurer. Uh, Wilder Holton. Offer Drugurgen. And Unter... It, it's in German, huh? My god. Lorenz was blackmailing Ferenic to get him to perform some kind of occult ritual. Um, no wonder Ferenic was so unsettled when Lorenz arrived. The Baron could have gotten him executed for witchcraft. Okay. Interesting. So we, Ferenic is potentially involved in uh, occult rituals, and potentially so was the Baron, or the Baron was blackmailing him or something. Anyway, um, that's good to know. So we definitely need to get that thing dug up when we can. If we can see Otto, that would be great. Right, let's leave this way. Hello, Till. Hello, Master Maller. Okay, we'll leave everything be. Let's go see the Drukers. Let's advance the plot to the point where the game opens up and then we can see. So I'm fairly certain it's the nun who lives in here who is the um, one that had irreparable damage done to them. So I can see how they might not have been able to do anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good day, Andreas. Back from the Abbey already. It's only noon. Oh, I just noticed there's also, like, little uh, printing errors as well in the text. That's kind of neat. Andreas, are you all right? It sounds like they've forgiven me for not turning up to dinner. Um, no, something terrible has happened. We're going to tell them. We're going to be honest. Yes, it might spread um, rumors around the village, but we're going to be honest. Oh, God. What hap- No, forgive me. Come inside and sit down for a minute. Um, if it's not an imposition, I'd appreciate a moment to rest. Not an imposition at all. My friends are always welcome at, in my home. Besides, I could use your opinion on something. Well, it's very nice, you see? Well, he's forgiven us. I was worried that he was going to be like, You didn't turn up to dinner, so no, you can't come in. Good day, Andreas. Should I fix you a plate? Um... I'm always glad to eat your cooking, Marie. 
Oh my, Klaus, you must invite Andreas over more often so I can hear someone compliment my food. Uh, your cooking is lovely, darling. Hello. Hello, Berthold. How are you? Sleepy. Uh, come back to my workshop. Okay. I'm going to do a new run of Till uh, Julen Spiegel. There was a printing a few years ago in Strasbourg, but it was awful. Almost bereft of illustrations. So which one is this again? Uh, book with the prankster in it. Okay. What do you think of these new ones? Um... Let's see. They look wonderful, excellent work, or the figures and composition are terrific, but the background is quite dense and busy. It is a little dense and busy. Yeah, let's say that. I would suggest running this in two passes, with the background elements in a lighter ink, to help the character stand out. That's a fine idea. I'll pass on your compliments to Marie. Ooh, she did the drawing. Are these her woodcuts? They are. The drawings were uh, were mine, but she did the block cuts. Oh, so it was his drawing, and then uh, she cut the wood. That's cool. I've got enough talent to draw the designs, but only she can do the wood cuts and the type. Cool. Bless us, O oh Lord, and these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 I'm hungry. Amen. We'll, we'll, we'll be serious. Andreas, what were the bells for at the Abbey? They were sounding for a long time. Uh, the visiting nobleman, Lorenz Rothvogel, was found murdered in a chapter house. I'm also going to click this so that the red line doesn't appear. We know who it is, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, this also takes away my question about whether we're going to tell people. I guess we are. God in heaven, you just rode by here yesterday. Yes, and it gets worse. One of the elderly brothers I work for in the scriptorium, Piero, was accused of the crime. Again, I'm just going to get rid of the red line. That's awful. A murder in Kiersau. How could a monk do such a thing? I'm sorry, Andreas. The Baron seemed like an interesting man, and I know he's been a patron of the Abbey for years. How did he die? Could it have been an accident? And does the Abbot really believe that Brother Piero killed him? You've always spoken of him in the kindest terms. Hmm. Um, I'd rather spare you the details, but it's hard to believe what happened to him was natural. But no, I can't believe Piero did it. I can't imagine him harming anyone. Oh, don't hold back on my account. I've had uh, children and even helped Agnes deliver a few. I'm not squeamish. Okay. Yes, blood! But if it wasn't Brother Piero, who do you think could have done it? I did see Lucky Steinauer get into a shouting argument with Lorenz yesterday just before I walked by your place. So, that'll be him. Lucky. Why would he have cause to shout at a nobleman? Uh, ooh, what are we going to eat? Egg pasta? Sausage? Farmer bread? Uh, let's start with the, uh, well, well, let's start with a little bit of bread. There's probably something else going on that you wouldn't know about, dear. What do you mean by that? I'm not one to trade gossip, but if you really want to know, talk to some of the other women in town. Or Mother Cecilia up at the Abbey. Now, we already did speak to her, so we spoke to her out of turn. Okay, that's fine. I spoke with Mother... Oh, so he did expect that we could have spoken to her. Interesting. Anyway, I spoke with Mother Cecilia already. Her resolve to protect the sisters is unrelenting. Yes, I would imagine so. Oh, there's no need for that. Lucky is a forthright man. I'm sure if you ask him, he'll tell you what the argument was about. Thank you both. That's good advice. There's something else, though. 
When Lorenz and I were walking through the meadow, the widow Kemp uh, Kemperin came out of the woods and... So, her? Yes. Well, she cursed him. I'm not surprised. Ottilia's late husband, Rannick, ran afoul of Lorenz on his last visit to Tassing. I don't remember the details, but Rannick died just last year, and Ottilia hasn't been the same since. Um, I would like to finish my bread. I, I guess we're going to have a little sausage. She was always an old bitch, even before she was old. Klaus, that's enough. She had to deal with a lot which she had to deal with a job's lot in life. Now she lives all alone at the edge of the woods. There are rumours she's going to lose her property soon. I do pity her, even if she is a bit... Bitter woman. There should be some exception in the law for her to inherit. Um... Women are not legally barred from inheriting. It all depends on the details of the lease. Did she come from a wealthy family? She did, in fact. Wealthier than Rannix, anyway. If the land they lived on was part of her dowry, she may make a case to lay claim to it, or, the, or property of equal value. Well, well. Are you a lawyer, Andreas? Enough about Otilia. Is there anyone else you think may have done it? I don't know if he has any ill intent, but Prior Ferenic has been acting strangely since the day Lorenz arrived. Perhaps an academic disagreement. I know they're both avid readers, both of classics and new works. On his last visit, the Baron uh, bought a book on astronomy from me. I know the Prior has similar interests. But would the Prior kill someone over a simple disagreement? It's not that outlandish. When I was in university, I saw men throw punches over small academic concerns. What is an opinion for some is a testament of faith for others and worth killing for. That may be so, but I've never seen that sort of anger in prior, prior Ferenic. Not even when Gurnot was made abbot instead of him. Oh, so he was passed over for being abbot as well. Interesting. Afterward, he seemed bitter, but never violent. That just doesn't seem to be part of his character. Now, I wonder whether he could have been passed over due to uh, Baron Rothvogel. Like, maybe he put in a word as a wealthy um, patron and said, I would prefer if this person was made abbot. So, Lucky, the Widow, and the, Ab and the Abbey Prior. Anyone else? There was something strange when we approached the Abbey together. Mother Cecilia was outside with some of the sisters. Mother Cecilia scowled and took the nuns inside without saying a word. Sounds like they have, his they have a history, at least. Alright, we'll eat the egg pasta. I do not know Mother Cecilia personally, but I've never heard her speak badly of, e of her. I've never heard anyone speak badly of her. If she had cause to dislike the Baron, I must believe she had good reason. Well, Andreas, it sounds like there's a lot to look into. Um, thank you for your care. It's helped me understand how I can help Piero. You're always welcome here, Andreas. Anytime. Yeah. You're especially welcome with this one. God be with you, Andreas. Um, thank you. God be with you. And we'll leave. Alright, so it's now nons. Two days remain? Okay. I have several leads to follow, but where should I start? I could talk to Lucky Stauenauer. He's probably in front of his house. The widow Kemp uh, Kemperin lives south of here, near Franz Bauer. Again, I'm just getting rid of the, the message. Prior Ferenic is usually at the scriptorium, but I won't be able to talk to him until tomorrow. Still, nothing would prevent me from talking to Mother Cecilia in the convent. If I don't attend Brother Florian's examination of the body in the Abbey, he'll have to do without me. Well, I kind of want to go to the Abbey, but I also want to investigate first. Um, I wonder if there's anything that's going to tell me, like, time's passing. So, Mikolaus has departed for Innsbruck. Okay, so he's gone to get the Arch the Archdeacon of Fr uh, Freising. He will arrive in two days, I'm guessing. Okay. 
The Baron and the Nun, which we know some things about. We also know luckily, or we, we know roughly who this person is. Uh, occult Hands. Uh, yes, we need to find Otto to help me with that one. I think it's Otto. Uh, or I, I, I've been told this isn't a V, it's like Folkberg. Uh, to, who, or to help me dig up something. Hmm. But I could also get Otto to help me. Otelia cursed the Baron when we were walking through the meadow. She talked with Lucky. And then we have the Flood. Okay. Yeah, and that's the people who potentially were around. Um, can I check here? No. Okay. Well, I get the feeling that we should do the autopsy first, but I also don't know if it's going to move forward time. It'd be really nice if there was something telling me that this will move forward time. Do you want to speak to me? No. Okay. So let's head up here to the lower abbey. Head back this way to the upper abbey. I'm going to see if I can sneak in. Throw a stone. Andreas, this way. The reason I'm doing this first is because it said he could do without me. So that implies that we can skip this if we were doing something else. There you are. I'm glad the storm didn't delay you. Now, even though I gave instructions that I was not to be disturbed, we must work quickly. Seeing a corpse up close can be unsettling for some. I hope you're up to it. It's alright. I've thrown up enough to not mind it so much. Well, there's just that's one way to deal with it, I suppose. Just try not to splash me or the body in the process. Now then, you should probably take notes as we go. They might be useful later. Ah, of course. I will hope the game will do this for me. I will begin by inspecting his anterior, starting with the face and head. No visible wounds, no blemishes, teeth in good condition, nothing unusual. Neck, shoulders and chest are ordinary. Need to clean some blood away to examine the torso. Yes, there it is. A puncture wound between the 6th and 7th ribs. It's fairly shallow, though. I estimate it penetrated only about an inch, and it likely came from his own hand. It likely came from his own hand, so he stabbed himself? Hmm. Um, he wait, he inflicted on himself? How can you tell? From the angle and depth of the strike, it is as though he was holding it in his right hand as he fell on his side. Okay, so maybe he was in a fight. He was holding something, he fell over, and then that stabbed him. Okay. You must know that I was not always a monk. I was a mercenary for ten long years in Poland. My familiarity with wounds comes from my time on the battlefield. I am no true surgeon, but I am the closest Kurosawa has. Yeah, so as, as I think I said, he's basically just uh, the person who has some skill set that roughly resembles like a medical person, but not actually trained. Specifically. If the wound was that shallow, it doesn't sound like it could have been fatal. It wasn't. It's likely incidental, received while falling on his own knife. So was it his knife that Brother Piero was holding? He must have some other wound that issued forth all the blood we found in him. Or we found him in. Then surely this must mean that Brother Piero is innocent. It means it's incredibly unlikely that Brother Piero stabbed the Baron, but it doesn't explain what actually killed the man. Brother Piero should never have picked up that knife. I'm sure the appearance of guilt never even crossed his mind. Now then, let's move on. Hmm. Well, there is a sore on his sex, probably from the French disease. I doubt it had anything to do with his murder. The, the disease French soldiers received in the brothels of Naples? Yes, I believe this is syphilis. I was told this, but I also think I already knew that. Yes. How do you know of it? Hehehe. <laughs> oh, I see. Have you taken mercury for it? Um, I haven't suffered from it, thankfully. One must be somewhat cautious. Ah, good. Anyway, it seems the Baron was not the most faithful husband. Not uncommon among the nobility. Huh? I would expect a monk to be more shocked by this. No, he said he was a mercenary. We're going to say nothing. Moving down. 
Other than a few blisters on his feet from what I assume are new shoes, there's nothing wrong with his legs. Andreas, can you help me turn him over? Um, front and affirmative, uh, stoically. Yeah, let's do it. There's a slight irregularity in his spine, possibly from an old injury. I don't think it has anything to do with how he died, though. Um, I spent enough time with nobles to guess that he probably fell off his horse when hunting. It seems a silly thing to risk your life for, but I'm not one to talk. Whatever the reason, it didn't contribute to his death. Here it is, a rather dramatic head wound. The dark hair and blood make it difficult to see, but it's quite bad. In my experience, I've never uh, seen someone walk away from a head wound of this severity. How many head wounds have you seen? Too many and not enough. As grim as it sounds, there is, almost more, there is always more to learn. Italian doctors try to examine as many corpses as they can to fully understand the mysteries of the body. The battlefields of Poland and Lithuania aren't as ideal a learning environment as the University of uh, Bologna but they did provide an education of sorts. Um, so, why didn't you study medicine in a university? My family was too poor to even consider it. Mercenary work was my way off the farm. The wound looks like it was caused by a single powerful blow from a blunt object, probably no more than four or five inches across. How can you tell? The skull is cracked in a single spot and there's a clear impression in the skin around it. I would take It would take extraordinary precision to hit the same spot twice unless the Baron were already dead. It's likely he didn't die immediately. How long could he have survived for? I've seen similar injuries in battle. The victims don't last more than a few minutes, but it's an agonizing death. Even so, he couldn't have wandered far uh, from where the blow was first struck. So he may not have been attacked in the chapter house. Interesting. Okay. He was either attacked in the chapter house or somewhere, someplace in the immediate era, area. Could he have been attacked outside the abbey? Let's just lower our possibilities. No, I don't think so. If a wound like that, he would have collapsed before he got inside. Certainly someone would have seen him. Anyway, whoever killed the Baron was a blunt instrument of considerable heft. That, uh, the part that impacted him was likely a little smaller than a fist. Could it have actually been a fist? Ha, no. I don't think the strongest soldier could do uh, this with a punch unless the Baron's head were pressed to the ground. So his head could have been pressed to the ground. Even then, we would also see damage to his nose or forehead. Fair enough, because it, it, they would be pressed on the ground. Could a woman or an elderly person have done it? Anyone could have done it, given the right weapon and sufficient height. Whoever did this must have caught the Baron unaware. Save the small knife wound, he had no other injuries. I suppose he was struck, drew his knife to defend himself, and fell on it before Brother Piero discovered him. So, I believe we've discovered two important things. Um... Piero didn't stab the Baron, and even if he had, that wasn't what killed him. Indeed. Though it may take more to convince the Archdeacon of Brother Piero's innocence. We also know the Baron was killed by a blow to the head from a heavy blunt object. Now you just need to find what caused the blow and learn who struck it. Oh, there is one other item of interest I found in the Baron's jacket, but didn't want to open it without you. Ooh, a letter pot potentially? Let's see. A note of some kind. I trust you to open it more carefully than I would. What does it say? The girl. The girl who died and the innocent with her. Martin's chapter. Or Matin's chapter. So 2 a.m. Yeah, so that's what she was saying, right? The, the, um, the mad uh, woman. Was basically, she was saying that's when uh, something was going to happen. 
The Girl Who Died and the Innocent Wither. Chapter. Hmm. Okay. The girl. What girl? And what innocent? One of the nuns? Uh, it's been years since any of the nuns have died. Perhaps Mother Cecilia would remember. Can you tell who wrote it? Ooh. They're not an Italian, I can tell you that. Italian scribes use humanist script. This is a highly refined gothic hand. As good as Adok or Guy are, I don't think they could replicate this. Okay, so they would have to be a natural of whatever, or of whoever was writing this. What, really? If not them, who? I intend to find out. I wish you good luck finding the answer. Now, I'm sorry to rush you, but I must ask you to leave. Every minute you stay here is an additional ru I'm going to say nothing. Brother Florian, could you open up? It's Werner Stoltz, the physician from Tassing. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm in the middle of something. Could you return after supper? I'm afraid it can't wait. Father Gurnot asked me to examine the Baron's body. Alright, just give me a moment. Andreas, I need you to hide yourself. Of course. Because he doesn't need want anyone to know that he let us in. That's a terrible hiding spot. Ah, uh, Dr. Stoltz, sorry to keep you waiting. Now, what did you need? The abbot wanted me to examine the Baron's body before his wife arrives. It seems unnecessary at this point, as I've just completed my own examination. Well then, what's the harm in letting me take a look? Dr. Stoltz, with all respect, I've finished. The cause of death is clear. If you had arrived an hour ago, I would have had no problem with your assistance. Assistance? I'm a university-trained physician. I can examine a corpse on my own without the help of a battlefield sawbones. He told us to stay hidden. We do what our friend told us. Regardless of your opinions regarding my abilities, the examination is finished. If you insist on inspecting the body anyway, I must insist that the abbot tells me himself. What? Making me bring the abbot here is a waste of time. So is performing an examination on this corpse immediately after one was just completed. Idiotic. I'll return with Father Gurnot presently. That's just an excuse to get him to go so we can escape, I think. Otherwise, he would have had no issue. I suspect, anyway. That was close. Now quickly, leave through the cloister before they return. Of course. Thank you, Brother Florian. Think nothing of it. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then. So we sneak out. And that moves time forward. Does that mean that we missed our opportunity to speak to people? Potentially it does. Although, it says we should find somebody to as, as eat with. I can't get that note out of my head. The girl who died and the innocent with her. Who could it mean and who wrote it? We already know who it is. We just need to prove it, basically. Alright. So we should be able to speak to everybody now, in theory. That's our footsteps. I thought that was blood. <laughs> uh, we need to find Otto. But apart from that... We haven't got anything else that we need to do. Okay. So, you want to speak? No. Okay, let's go where it suggested we go. So there's somebody in here we need to speak to. It is... Um, ah, so these are people we can eat with, I'm guessing? Meal. Ah, okay. Well, we don't want to eat with these people. We just want to find somebody to speak to about, um, about the murder. So let's head this way. Can we check the church? Nobody there to let us speak. Okay. Been to the Drukor house. That's not a meal place, so we're going to quickly pop our way in here. Speak. Hello. Andreas, what brings you to the shop? Can I help you fix something? You know I love your cooking, Marie, but perhaps another time. Or can I fix you something, I guess is what she said? Oh. Don't keep me waiting, Andreas. Until later. Until then. Okay. 
Hello. Hi, Andreas. Hello, Andreas. Okay, so they don't have anything to say. They're just having, like, a charm in life. We'll even be. Right. Um, let's go to Central Town. We are ideally looking to speak to Steinar, right? Yeah. Um, is that his name? I think it is. I can't check the people tab anymore. Yeah, it's you I want to speak to. Andreas. Good day, Lucky. Do you have a moment to talk? Make it quick. Um. Let's do it. I was wondering if I might break, bre uh, break bread with you and Agnes. Let's see, let's just say no. Okay. So we can only speak to somebody if we eat with them. We need to speak with Otto. Like, uh, the Ferenic thing is by far the most important thing we could be doing right now. It just seems like the obvious thing to do. So let's do that. Are you someone I can eat with? No, okay. Hello, Andreas. Right, so Zimmerman House. I don't know if this is actually somewhere we can eat. It, it says we can. So let's go in here. Let's see if we can get him to uh, agree. Did you have supper plans, Andreas? Want to join me and Dad at our table? Uh, I'd appreciate that, thank you. Let's get going then. Okay. Bless us, O Lord, and these get and these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. 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 How are you feeling today, Dad? Hands been killing me. Back's been killing me. Goddamn knees been killing me. You want some advice, boys? Don't get old. Hmm. Heh, wasn't planning on it. Uh, soft living keeps you young, that's true. Not like my boy here, age beyond his years. You work hard, you work too hard, son. But what choice do you have, eh? None. With the abbot breathing down my neck, I tell you he wants me to replace the roof on... I tell you he wants me to replace the roof on his house next. Um... Didn't you just replace the one in the scriptorium? Yeah, and I made a mess of my shoulder doing it. The way that bastard Gurnot orders me around, do you think I'm one of his little monks? Oh, I chose something to eat. I was just was literally just clicking to move the dialogue on. He works you like a dog and says it's for the glory of the God of the Lord. It's not right. Hmm. It's not, I agree. Easy enough for you to say when it's my work that keeps you warm while you're scribbling away in that scriptorium. Apologies, that was not Christian of me to put that on you, but neither am I wrong. The abbot's bad, but the miller might be worse. That shithead Lindhart's been screwing us for years with his toll. Hmm. Well, I get the feeling he may not be screwing you for much longer. <laughs> I've never spoken to him. That's not true. I have literally spoken to him. Anyway, um, is he really so bad? He's worse than, he, uh, he's even worse than you know, or will ever have to know, being a visitor, for which you should thank the Lord. Imagine your only income for the year was in the wheat that you could grow in the summer, and the miller determines how much it costs you to grind into flour. What if you have a poor season? What if the miller raises his toll? What if everyone has a great season and there's too much uh, goddamn flour to make any money with it? The farmers are at the mercy of the weather, the church and the miller. Two of those are beyond their power to influence. But the miller's their neighbor. He sees them struggle. He should help them. But not Lendhart Muller. He only takes more. I hadn't considered it like that. Lord willing, Lendhart will meet justice in this life for the next. Um, um, I suspect I know which Otto prefers. Ha, huh. you're accusing me of unchristian behavior, Master Maller? On to more pleasant pastures. Uh, you see any of those nuns while you were working, Otto? Dad. Um, we're gonna eat the salmon. I remember that Cecilia woman being pleasant to look at back when I worked up there. 
Um, did you pay much attention to the nuns, old Otto? Maybe he knows something about nuns from previous, like potentially nuns that have died. Oh, I pay attention to everything now that I can't work. Lots to see in the world, like nuns. Um, I have seen a few nuns myself, time to time. Heh heh heh. Other pretty sisters up there as well. Sometimes they catch the wrong man's eye. Shame what happened to that one a while back. Glad she came back, though. What happened? Which sister? I'm eating the uh, rye bread. It's a sad story. Not our place to share. Least of all because we don't have the details. Other oh, Cecilia would know. Not that she's likely to tell you. And some woman, Cecilia. That, that big veil of hers is full of secrets. She hinted that the Baron had hurt one of the sisters years ago. She wouldn't tell me anything else. That figures. She probably doesn't want any of the Abbey's dirty secrets getting out into the world. I think she knows something about the Baron's death. Uh, she keeps a keen eye over that Abbey, that's for certain. Not much happens there that she doesn't know about. Now, if you want to hear all of Tassing's little secrets, you should go to the Spinning Bee. Ooh. Ah, that gaggle. You can hear them cackling from here. The what? Where the women spi uh, spin wool. Talk to the Gertners. The Johann Bowers, or Cat. They'll tell you when to come by. Okay. Interesting. Hey, son, I need to lay down. Why don't you say goodbye to your friend here? Sorry, Andreas. The old man needs his rest. Um, rest well, old Otto. Ah, <sighs> don't know what you mean. Ain't any old men in this house. Hmm. So we can't speak to Otto right now. It's sleep time. Oh, we can. Cool. I should get some sleep or break into the library. Otto. Uh, evening, Andreas. Heard that Baron friend of yours was killed up at the Abbey. Um... My mentor, Brother Piero, has been blamed for the crime. One of the elder brothers, isn't he? Might have met him when I was replacing the scriptorium roof. Seemed an alright sort for a monk. Sorry to hear it. H anyway, did you need something? Otherwise, I got things to do. Hold on, what's your problem with Lorenz? He treated Lucky terribly. Lucky is a good man. That, I think, is reason enough. That's not my place to discuss Lucky's troubles with you. If you want to know more, ask him yourself. Hmm, I see. Perhaps I'll do that. Anyway, do you think you could help me dig up a grave at the Abbey? You think there's something in there that'll prove the old brother's innocent, right? That's it. You're perceptive, Otto. Heh. <laughs> I only listen when people talk. You should try it. Did you talk to the Abbot about this mischief? Wouldn't want my grubby hands all over his stuff without his permission. We'll be honest. No. So be furious when he finds out. Perfect. Ah, I'll take a few hours, especially if I'm digging alone. You got time for that? You don't care that the abbot doesn't know? Well, do I give a shit if he gets mad? He's an asshole. Do you want to do this now or not? Let me take care of a few things first. Alright, don't be too long. I've got actual work to do. Wait. That just told me no. Well, I didn't choose that. Um, interesting. So I have to do something else first and then I can come back to him? Interesting. Okay. Otto? Nothing else to say. So when it told me I've got two things I could do, it meant, like, i got two things that I can do. Uh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I wonder if I can speak to everybody else right now. Maybe I have to leave the building or something. Oh, I can't enter the house. We just I guess we just can't do it in the evening. Ah, so there must be things that you can only do at certain times of the day. Huh. Okay, so it's starting to get very much into a time management type of thing. Okay, uh, let's go this way. I'll head past the church. Can I check my map? Does it tell me anything? So there are things to it. This tells you you can investigate something. 
you can uh, have a meal, sleep, or an objective. Okay. So we can sleep here, or we can investigate in the abbey. Now, we, we, we want to break into the library because we know how. So let's just do that. Yeah. Let's break into the uh, library. It's definitely hinting that we should. And then that will tell us about the person at the... Um, yeah, at the small church. Hmm. Okay. Up here. Break in. Oh shit, Matthew is the Abbey's uh, circator. If he sees me, he'll kick me out. Monk responsible for making rounds in the Abbey to make certain everyone is where they are supposed to be, doing what they are supposed to do. I have to keep out of sight until he's passed. Good thing he can't see well. Very good hiding spot. Yes. Very, very well done. Crypt. We'll go straight there. Then we're going to sneak in the back way. If I go up these stairs, it's going to take me a while to find the records I need. I'll lose some time tomorrow morning unless I turn back now. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. We get the information as soon as possible. Search the nun's records. Read. What's this? The Herbis Cambrai. On the Herbs of Wales. Oh. The writer is Cadfelius of Salopia. I don't believe I've heard of him. Mugwort and Butcher's Broom. Not familiar with the properties, but they sound extraordinary. A beautifully illustrated book, and the author appears to be speaking from his own personal experiences. A wonderful hidden treasure for the Abbey. Not what we were looking for, though. Check over here. Nothing over here, apart from potentially somewhere to hide. Ooh, we can go up the stairs there. Is that the way back? That must be the way back into... Well, that doesn't actually lead anywhere. Interesting. Ooh. Okay. We weird looking area. That's fine. Let's read these. What do we have here? A bifolium taken from a larger text. The Mysteria Astra. I'm not familiar with it. Some sort of astronomical text? Seems rudimentary. Explaining the connection between astrological signs and the elements, and the basic relationship to alchemy. Each sign is governed by one of the four elements. Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces are the water signs. Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo are earth signs, and so on. It cuts off there. The next page is about something else entirely. Sister Illuminata must be trying to reconstruct the larger text. Okay. Interesting. Those two pages were interesting enough, I suppose, but quite basic. Wait, what's the connection between astrological symbols on Ferenic Cipher and the elemental symbols... That's the connection between the astrological symbols on Ferenic Cipher and the elemental symbols on the Vovelli. This must be the text he referenced to create a cipher. Interesting. It would have been much simpler to solve, that, uh, to solve if I'd seen this first. Okay, we've already solved it. But, um, the fact that he was using that text could imply that the sister is involved. Potentially. This is most curious. Historia de Labyrinthio Liborum? Account of the Labyrinth of Books. Ah, so it tells you where the books are. I believe a, a Bolognese uh, professor told me a tale about such a place in Piedmont. Somewhat hard to believe, to be honest. That old man was quite a storyteller, I must admit. Or maybe it's about where books were somewhere else. Okay, not relevant to what we're looking at in our particular investigation. This one. Must be it. This looks promising. The familiarities uh, or the, yeah, the familiars of the sisters of Curacao Abbey. Okay. Mother Catherine was the first to enter the records, it looks like, almost 50 years ago. Sister Hildegard from the Golderich family in Ravensburg. Quite wealthy. 
Looks like she became prioress after Mother Catherine. Sister Cecilia. Adelhet? Oh, this is Mother Cecilia's record. Wait, she's from the Welser family? They're one of the most powerful families in Osberg. It looks like her family donates a lot of money to Curacao every year. More than my family, season 10. Interesting. Sister Gertrude from Hoff, the herbalist, yes. In case you forgot, that's her. Her father is an apothecary. That explains it. Matilda Oblate. Yes, the nun's uh, cellarer. She came from Kempton. Appointed official in a monastery, responsible for maintaining food supplies and maintaining the grounds. Okay. Merchant family, they donated pigments to use in the scriptorium. Quite thoughtful. I'll have to thank them if I ever get the chance. And Sister Illuminat uh, Illuminata. Oh, this should be interesting. Sister Illuminata. Named Angeline from the Capucci family in Perugi, uh, in uh, Perugia. It looks like they have some connection to Curacao through an old abbot, Rudolf. Her family donates money to the abbey every year as well. Okay. Um, so that's where she became uh, Mother Cecilia. And we have this one. Sophie from uh, Burgitz. So her. Her family is poor, but they donated flour. We're going to skip, because I think this is the one that's going to be important. Especially as it looks like the name has been removed, potentially. Anyway, Sister Zedna. This should be good. Hehehe. <laughs> they donate a fortune to the Abbey. No wonder Mother Cecilia and the Abbot let her behave as she does. Sister Margaret. Oh, the blind girl who assists Gertrude. Maybe she's the one who was... Maybe I've... She could also be the sister. If that was what happened. She went blind because of a failed surgery on her cataracts. Never mind. Wealthy peasant family. They donated wool and a pasture in Crimmel. And then... Lishbet Oblate. She's from U Utrecht. It looks like she had an eventful life before coming here. Married with a child. Both died. Her merchant family has some connection to Curacao through the Kaufmanns of Rothenburg Ob de... Obder Tauber. Okay, so none of these people were the ones that we were looking for. Oh, maybe this? Hmm, this note says that Sister Matilda left the Abbey for several months. How would she go into her hermitage? Seems strange that she's the only entry with such a note. The date's three years ago. This was just before Father Mata uh, Matthias died. Which means that it was around the time that Baron Rothfogel visited. This has to be it. Matilda must be the nun that Baron harmed on his la last visit. I should talk to Mother Cecilia again. Maybe Sister um, Matilda as well. Oh, okay, we're going to have to go into the people thing. Uh, close your eyes. We're, we're not going to read any of the reading bit. All, all we're going to do is we're going to come in here. I'm sorry, you are not Sister Sophie of uh, Burgess. I, I don't care what it says. You are, That is not you. Anyway, um... I am looking for Matilda. Right, so she looks like that. Cool. Okay, so we could potentially try and speak to her. Now it's time for us to leave and it's going to make us walk out. Which means I think there's a chance that we get caught on the way out. That would seem uh, logical. There we go. And there's where we hide. I said... Where we're going to hide. Oh. Interesting. What are they doing up here? Oh. What in the what? Shit. Um... Alright, I just need to wait for them to leave. For... Uh, Rudiger and Matthew to leave. Just a little patience. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. 
How much time did we miss? We're already at eating phase. Hello? Andreas! Andreas, wake up! Well, are you here for the books or for me? Um... You, of course. I'd call you a liar, but I know it's the truth. You probably pray every evening that when you knock on the door in the morning that I'll answer instead of Illuminata. Something like that. Do you want to keep talking? Sure. Or not. I guess. Yeah, brother, brother Piero can wait. I guess. Oh, you know what you're doing. That's a nice surprise. Sister Zedna, are you here yet? Sister Zedna? Hold a finger to our lips. Angrily presents the upraised middle finger of her right hand. Oh God, protect us, Sister Illuminata. Come quickly, someone is sleeping behind the bookshelf. Oh no. Andreas, how did you find your way in here? Why are you here in the first place? You scared Sister Zedena half to death. I just realized I've been missing the D in her name this whole time. Um, There are books I wanted to see and you never let me look at them. It's as simple as that. He's lying. He came here to seduce me. No. There's too much zeal in your claim, sister. What were you really doing here, Andreas? I was looking for the Abbey's admission records for clues about the Baron's death. What do the Abbey's records have to do with Baron Rothvogel's murder? I learned that the Baron hurt one of the sisters on his last visit to Curacao. Oh, I see. Yes, Sister Matilda. What happened to her was evil. But if you were reading about Sister Matilda, you can't really believe she killed the Baron. Matilda killed Baron Rothvogel? Shush, of course not. I sincerely doubt that's poss that it's possible. Um, why not? Grief makes people do terrible things. This is not appropriate for us to discuss any further. You should speak to Sister Matilda or Mother Cecilia. I can't speak with you. It is not my story to tell, and in case you've forgotten, you shouldn't even be here. Please leave immediately. So soon? Now, Andreas, or I will raise the abbot. Um. Fine. Until later, sisters. Come, sisters, is there now? We have work to do. Alright then. <laughs> I should find someone to eat with. Yes, it's been a long time since I last ate. It was kind of the thing we did before we went in here, but whatever. Wait, am I free to explore again? I think I'm free to explore again. Although now I need to find someone to eat with. We could, of course, eat with somebody in here. There's somebody in the guest house we can eat with? Really? Who's in the guest house? Down this way. And in here? Oh. Um, we have a new uh, dog. Uh, Furch Chen. Oh, that's the Baron's wife. Oh. That's the Baron's wife. Well. You know what? I think we're going to speak with her. Next time. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.